Hello everyone, this is Carlos Ocelor and welcome to the G2 podcast. Today we have actually must be our most known player in the Call of, in the Call of Duty. Oh my goodness, on the, in, in our Rainbow Six team, right? Yeah. He has to be our most known. His name, or his nickname, his alias is named after an aquatic bird for some whatever reason, which hopefully he'll be able to explain. Pengu! How's it going, my man? Hello, good sir, I'm uh, I'm doing quite well, thank you. Just preparing for the uh, Japan event we have coming, uh, traveling tomorrow for it. Oh, that's actually... Yeah, what happens in that event, actually? So, it's going to be a show match between <laughs> us and uh, some Norango, so Japanese pro league players. And then they have some content creators from a team called Files Back. Going to just have a, have a good time. You know, I think we're going to mix the team, so half Japanese, half English speaking, and uh, put on performance, put on show. That sounds fun. Yeah. That sounds pretty fun. So I don't know if you guys know, but this will actually be our last podcast for this season, 2018. So Pengu, you get to be the last, the last man standing. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, it's <laughs> like being the first, you set the standards for everybody going in, but being the last, I can just, I can end the show terribly or amazing. It doesn't right? matter. I mean, I don't think it doesn't no matter. You just said, you just set the tone. <laughs> yeah. No, As... I'm excited. I'm, uh, I've seen the previous ones, some of them, and uh, I mean, generally speaking, I've been following you for many, many years because uh, I followed League of Legends, you know, back when I started. So, uh, pleasure to be here. Perfect. So, you're younger than me, and hope so. <laughs> yeah, you are. You absolutely are. Definitely are. Um, <laughs> what kind of games did you play when you were younger, or did you play any games at all? Uh, it started with the PS2. I think like Sly, <laughs> Ratchet and PS2, Clank. PS2, that's already that's already advanced it's a long time ago. for me. That's already oh, okay, advanced, advanced, advanced for you. Okay, I mean you're growing up with uh, you know black and white TVs, all that kind of stuff, right? Oh, no game or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's PS1 and before even before PS1, some weird other consoles that I can never remember. Game Boy, that's fair. In, actually Game Boy in black and white as well. Yeah, that, yeah that sucked. Yeah. That really sucked. Yeah. I mean, I remember only fun. a few years in, I had a Game Boy Color, and I was like, wow, like, this is crazy, right? Because uh, <laughs> actually, my first Game Boy was black and white only, so oh, I then, saw then... a little bit of a Wait, hang on, how old were you? I, I'm born in 97. Okay, so you're seven years old, I mean, uh, younger than me. That's, that's, a big, that's a big gap. So yeah. maybe it was because I started off really early playing Game Boy, like really, really, really early. Yeah. Um, maybe that's why. But So what kind of games do you play? Uh, nowadays or before? Beforehand, like so, when Beforehand. you were much younger. Oh, it started with uh, you know, the Jack and Dexter, Ratchet and Clank. Oh, um, those are great games. Yeah, like Spyro, etc. Um, then I kind of moved on to you know Counter Strike, you know, one point six <coughs> and World of Warcraft, uh, Warcraft Three, Ooh, Wind of Chaos. How did you manage to get into World of Warcraft and, uh, and out? Yeah. See, I oh, I, I'm not out yet, Carlos. That's the issue. I'm still in it. <laughs> He's um, still in it. He's still. I'm playing still World in Warcraft. it. I know. Like right before this call, before I you know got ready, I was actually just playing um the new expansion, Battle for Azeroth. So uh, I'm still grinding. 14 years after. Man, I l last time I played World of Warcraft was 2009, and I promised myself I wouldn't touch it again because yeah. it's either that or life. No, no, it is. It is. Honestly, it's ruining my career right now. So uh, I need to make terms <laughs> with that. And... Exactly. Please stop. <laughs> Now, now that we're with G2, we got to step up our game here. <laughs> I like yeah, the openness, but please don't. <laughs> please don't. Um, you should, honestly, honestly, Carlos, for like your, when you employ people in the future, you should put in a contract. Like, must <laughs> no, not work out. Exactly. <laughs> honestly, you'd be surprised at how often have I, have I seen people either get fired or slowly losing their position in the company as a result of World of Warcraft, actually. I believe it, 100%. Believe and even it. out, you know, different companies that are not G2. Like, actually, World of Warcraft is a cause of, you know, losing a strong employee as valid as any other. Like a standalone, you know, <laughs> se like specific reason, World of Warcraft. Yeah. It's scary, man. It's scary. That game, I mean, it's fucking scary. It's addicting, right? It's it, it's good in a scary way, I would say. It's the best game ever created in the history of humanity and the game that will... Uh, there will not be a better game ever. I mean, I refuse to believe it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's been... How many? It's over almost 10 years now. 
And I still have, to this day, dreams about, yeah. about playing arenas and about being in molten core and like raiding. I was, I was a warrior, I was a tank. I had, I had my own guild and I was the main tank. I mean, even actually before I had my, my, my own guild, uh, I was like 12 years of age or something like that and with my, with my really high pitch voice. And I was in this Lithuanian team, it's clan, a guild. And uh, I was a second tank, not even the second, like a third, fourth tank, whatever, right? <laughs> and there was this big, big guy. It was super good guy, tanking, super buffed and all that. And I had a night elf, I remember. And this guy, which was the main tank in, the, in that guild for like a year or something. So we, 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 were, we were trying to kill Nefarian for the first time. Mm -hmm. I remember it. And we were actually among the earlier people, right? I mean, earlier kind of groups uh, killing it. Yeah. Like maybe top 30 or something. I mean, it's not too great, but it's like, right? It's pretty good for and, that time, yeah. Uh, but but they, I remember that they, they picked me up um, uh, because I was like, my attitude was great and I had eyes open and, and not great gear though. Uh, <laughs> but, and, and so okay. I was like off tanking Nefarian. I remember I was like doing my Saturn armor and all that stuff. I remember still the, the name of the things. And and for some reason, so well, for some reason, the guy dies when he's like in a fire and he's like 70% or something, right? And, oh, yeah. And I have just enough aggro. Like, I remember, man, it was graphical. Like the next one was like a rogue of the of the guild or something. I had just enough aggro to be the off tank. And then I tanked it. It was like one of the million tries we made. And we actually killed it there. When I was the tank, oh, when and you I was, tanked it. yeah, yeah I, I was not geared at all, but everybody was like healing me <laughs> so much. And after that moment, I became the main tank. It was, it was, oh wow, it was, yeah, okay. it was, it was the, it was a defining moment in my nerd career. That's when it all started, you know, the success, the momentum, the motivation, the dedication. I really, I don't know, man. It could be, but it was it, like <laughs> I still have dreams about of that moment or different other moments. Is this the best game on earth, man? Like it's seriously. Like, no, it, it is. It's something else for sure. It's the ridiculous. The story, the lore, the depth. Man, the lore. Oh my God. I was speaking with Jankos last week and yeah. he was, we were speaking about the lore of World of Warcraft and he was saying how much he read books and things like that about World of Warcraft. So it's, it's, I mean, it's just the best fucking game and storyline and everything ever. Blizzard are geniuses. Do you watch the Warcraft video, um, movie? Yes, I did. Like in the cinema when it came out, it was I had to good. like see, you had seeing to, yeah. your characters being brought to life and seeing them, you know, being actually portrayed. I, I loved it. <laughs> Even if the movie Absolutely. wasn't, you know, if you're not a World of Warcraft player, I don't think you would like the movie per se. But as a World of Warcraft player, seeing that being, you know, showcased <laughs> yep. to you, I was I, like, oh my god! Amazing. Every time yeah. someone somebody appeared, I was like, oh my god, it's that guy! Yeah, it's or, him! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Exactly. Man. Unbelievable. So. By the time when you were, let's say, 12, 13, 14, 15 ish, um, do you yeah. follow esports by then? Yes, sir, I did. So, it, uh, who, yeah. who are your biggest idols and the teams you were following? I think I didn't have any in the beginning, but then when, when Bjergsen came around in League of Legends oh, wow. from Copenhagen Walls to TSM, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, if a Danish person like myself could play in a small country and get bought by a big team, go to a different region and have success there. Uh, I thought that was amazing. And then Bjergsen's story with, you know, like being bored in school and yeah. really being, you know, very happy in school. I wasn't enjoying school either. So I could really feel myself and like how he was growing up. Like I wasn't really feeling it either. So if he could do it, I would like to believe that I could do it too. That's beautiful. He's yeah. actually a great guy as well, uh, Bjergsen. This year in TSM, things were, didn't go as you know, they were that pretty well. rough, yeah. yeah. It's been a it's been a hard year since TSM fan, that's for sure. Yeah, which 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 it's weird because they actually should be winning. I mean, that lineup is pretty good. Um, maybe yeah, Yang on yeah. top a bit weak, but the bottling is insane, and he's insane himself. So yeah. it's it's odd. It's odd. So apart from yours, was there anybody else that you were looking up to? Uh, I think when I started with FPS games, you know, Siege three years ago, it was Shroud, former Cloud Nine, oh, nice. and now a streamer, because uh, I needed like an FPS. You know, I can to look up to like I'm new in this game, right? So I was he's like, actually oh, pretty fracker. sick. In, like any game he plays, that needs, exactly he needs you to aim. He's just insane. Yeah, he has this. I, I call him like in my opinion one of the most like raw mechanically talented players. <laughs> I agree with that. Pick up a game and just make it work. I agree with that. It's so tough as well. Like he just picks up a new game and like yeah. he just gets the mechanics, the recoil. He's he gets so everything. Good at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to be like that. So, I think. Sure. Well, you you know you have you have it in your hands. Um, 
I, I, I remember when PUBG was like the thing, it, like it reached like 3 million uh, unique uh, active, no, daily oh, active users a day. I mean, yeah. Essentially every day, right? Uh, yeah. or, or like a peak uh, on, on average. It was um, by that moment when Shroud was like considered the best player in the world at that game. Like he was just doing incredible stuff. Like you would see the highlights on YouTube and it was just insane. That guy mm. is unbelievable at aiming and, and everything related to aiming. Um, so you definitely can, can can be that guy. I mean, he's he's not necessarily <laughs> the most entertaining. That is, in my eyes, true. Yeah. But the, how good he is, that's it. Like, you don't need anything else. That's yeah. enough for, no, for you mean, to watch. It's a content stream for sure, right? And watching Shrouded stream is what people on Reddit says. It's a highlight reel, just like a constant highlight reel, like on repeat. Yep. Uh, and I think that sums it up pretty well. Even though he didn't have the most success... As a competitive player, necessarily, you know they didn't. I mean, he did major. actually. Come on, like they, they. No, they did. They did, but they never won a major with him, right? But yeah, then it's then not like have... there's. He created a legacy out of competitive no. success. You're right. But he was known. He was. He was definitely a star player and well spoken of, and he had some great tournaments and great runs and whatnot. But but he's not really what we call um, like like tournament winning wise. He's not like a top aspiring athlete, right? But he had a good career for sure. Yeah, I hear you. Um, so you play. I mean. I assume that because you were following yours and you did play League of Legends. I played League for like six years, I think. Jesus, yeah. what do you reach? I so I was like a high diamond player okay. in solo queue, and then that's I reached good. challenger in three three and five v five team rank. That's pretty good. I I tried to I wanted to go pro in League, so I played the uh, Ragnarok Nordic tournament in season four, I think, when it came out, and I wanted to qualify for Challenger League by winning that, and we got to semifinals and got smacked like. 2-0 in a best of three, basically. Oh no! We think we think we, think we lost uh, the first match in 11 minutes. We just got dove bot lane over and over again. I got an 80 carry, and we, we lost. Oh my god! And now I say that my career in League of Legends that is. Okay, how do you like League of Legends versus the differently skilled game that you ended up playing uh, with Rainbow Six? Um. I feel like I'm a better League player than Siege player, despite having a lot more success in Siege, of course. Um, I like mobile games a lot. I like the tactical aspect, you know, having a you know big brain, so to speak, and mm -hmm. being able to play the macro game on the map and uh, shot calling the way you shot call with a lot of like overview. Because in FPS games, it's first person. It's very you know dive into the battlefield. Whereas with mobile games, you have this um, bird eye top view camera, and you can kind of rotate on the mini map. And uh, I'm very good at keeping like an overview, but I'm a little bit more panicky when it comes down into the fray. So. I see. I miss I miss that aspect of League of Legends <laughs> for sure. And and despite playing you know Siege for three years now competitively, I still play mobile games occasionally to get that satisfaction of that aspect. That's perfect. As as I feel like as a hobby, um, it's a nice hobby to have to play MOBA. As yeah. Professionally, oof, it's. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it's hard. It's tough because the game literally like changes as a whole yeah. every week or two weeks uh profession i mean for professional yeah. teams the screams it's just i mean it's not like in rainbow six where meta will change and the way you play maps and things like that change at the end of the day core mechanics are sort of similar here yeah. you have um meta in terms of line uh, uh, setups changing very often yeah and meta in terms of actual way to play the game changing very often yeah. And and that is just too much change. <clears throat> so as a pro player, it's actually quite, it's too violent. It's just too too much. It's, it's a lot, right? Because you keep adjusting to a new thing, you get comfortable. Oh, it's changed. Yeah, exactly. I saw Double this video. He made it. I'm sure you've seen it too. He made a video on it called uh, "Why It's Bad That League of Legends Is an Ever Evolving Game." I think the title needs to be something like that, where it's like a cinematic video where he goes into statistics about. Oh, it. When they changed age rocks, etc., and it was a really good video, and I think it, it narrowed. On, down on one up. hand, you need these changes because otherwise you don't keep the player yeah. base engaged. So, no, for sure, hundred percent sure. agree with that. But on the other hand, as a professional player, this is very tough, and it it, I mean, it's just part of his job. It's just that it's really tough. I remember I went to Turkey uh, for my only holidays in four years, oh. and yeah, and I went for yeah. one week, and I returned from Turkey. And I swear to God, for the next two two months approximately, I was trash. Yeah. Because w w what happens is that when something changes in the game, 
like you like the champions played change then you missed why it changed so yeah. you miss the reasons of why things changed the only thing you see is the end result so i'm not there for a week then i return i'm like what the fuck they they play this hero now they play that hero now they play much more uh the much slower now yeah. um, and and you don't understand why that happened if I would have played that week, I would have understood what that happened. Yeah, you have known, yeah. Like, okay, so people pick Galio now because of they were playing this, this, and this. And now it plays you know, slower because this and this and this. And the problem is that when you miss why things happen and why meta changes, is when you do not master the meta. And as a result, yeah. you are like, you're fall reacting. Behind, right? Yeah, you fall yeah. behind, you're reacting. You see people playing one champion and you're like, it's the first time I see it. I, this can't work. Then it works. And you don't understand why, because you miss the yeah. train, you know? It's exactly. so hard. You miss one meta shift and, and in League of Legends or in Dota for that matter. Yeah. And you'll miss like a big part of, of why that happened. And and that's just, honestly, it's unbearable after, after some time. It's just unbearable. I think it's frustrating because you can play the game, you know, as many hours as a lot of like, most League of Legends personal players do. But despite all those hours being invested, you continuously fall back in like, you know, you step two steps forward, you take one step back, right? Yep. Because change. And I think it's frustrating because you invest all this effort and you don't really get that far because mm -hmm. of the continuous reset. Uh, another point, that's correct, actually. And another point is that games such as Counter-Strike um, and Rainbow Six, they seem like they have such a high skill sailing that yeah. the difference between the best and the second best is just higher than in a game yeah. like League of Legends. Yeah, a lot higher, I would say. Which as a result makes, you know, results <clears throat> to, or if you're like a professional, if you're in your position, you know that, um, you know that you will be uh, much better than your average tier two player yeah. than somebody like perks which is let's say you in in, in league of legends um you know would think about about his role right like, the difference between perks and a tier two mid laner from the ulcs is high but not as high yeah <clears throat> and and they can actually get away the opponents can get away with a few games where they even win lane and kill him one-on-one -on -one and things like that yeah yeah i mean it makes sense because in league of legends you have you know, raw static numbers, like my Q would deal X damage, I will last the creep at X health. And there's the whole like math um, math part about that. Yep. Whereas in the FPS game, it's mechanical, like you have aim and you can, you know, one shot headshot, etc. But you don't have like raw numbers to play off of. Like, we yeah, don't have right. In League, X champion will win lane most likely against another champion, but then they outscale them late game. Or for example, yeah, it's true. Yeah. And also so, the number of variables for a shooter are yeah. infinite. Because you can always yeah. get better. Like, like there's nobody that's a robot. Like, nobody finds somebody's head and that's like <laughs> into the head yeah. directly. Nobody does that. Exactly. So you can always get better at yeah. aiming faster and more accurately. So, yeah. which means that it's almost infinite variables that make you better at shooters. Whereas sure. League of Legends and other kind of games like that, there are a lot of factors associated with winning or losing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it is team play as well, but uh, we're talking about only... Uh, individual skill and mechanics, but um, uh, you know, talking about individual skill mechanics, undeniably, there's just way less variables at play. Yeah, no, for sure, definitely. And and in a way, that's a this this you know that's bad, I guess, because <laughs> skill cap is slower. But in another way, is uh, great because the num the, the team's actually winning as often, or the best players in the world. Yeah, shift a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and then you have examples, which is why it's so impressive what he did, like Faker, or yeah. examples like Uzi, which are players that for a really long amount of time, they've been considered Dominated. the best in their positions, right? In the world, yeah. uh, which th th that is actually impressive. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything, maybe in StarCraft too, uh, but, but Faker, what Faker showed yeah. during those four years, that was ridiculous. No, well, it was. Like, like everyone knows about him as well. Like he was just the player. And how do you do that in League of Legends? Like I understand you do it in fucking Ozu in Counter Strike. <laughs> like I mean, it's still yeah. impressive, of course. But like doing it in a game where the second best player in the world is just like really, really good as well. Like it's just almost as good, yeah. you know? 
Right, basically the same thing, yeah. Um, so how did you get into, into, into Rainbow Six? How did that all come together? How did you try the game? Uh, 2000, so it was the E3 conference, like 2014, I think. Oh, that, that was, was, that, that was, that that was a good one. I remember it. Okay, I only saw that like, Siege, but, but I, I, I'll take your word for it. Um, but my friend showed me the trailer for Siege, and then it came out in like, closed beta, you know, mid-2015. And then in October, they had an open beta, and then the game came out December 1st. I played all of those beta game or beta versions, and I was like, oh, this game is, it, it's okay, it's fun, it's different, I'll try it. Um, bought the game, you know, pre-ordered it, I played it for a week straight when it came out. And then I uninstalled it. And I was like, this game, this game sucks. Like, I'm not going to bother with this game. Um, and then I was like, oh, wait, I'm kind of craving it again. You know, a couple of weeks later, re-downloaded it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try. Because I was playing Heroes of the Storm at the time after failing League of Legends. Mm -hmm. And Heroes of the Storm was not <laughs> my game. I did not. <laughs> it was very flat. It was a fun, was it's a fun game. You play for yeah. 10 hours and you have a blast. But it's a yeah. really flat game. Like, we're talking yeah. about Skill Cup. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it, goes it, down. I think it's fun casual game with your friends yeah but the, the skill ceiling was extremely low and i felt like i was being outplayed by people who didn't even want to play the game competitively all the time and i was trying my butt off right so after not enjoying the game too much competitively i was looking for a new game and back then that's also when overwatch was getting pretty big after having a very long beta and i was like overwatch siege well overwatch had a long beta so i can't compete with all the beta players and i played the beta in siege myself so i have a slight edge so I committed to it. Uh, Interesting. You know, and, and then after 20 days, I made a forum post like, oh, I want to go pro. And that's, my post literally said, look into go pro or at least the top. Stating my name, age, experience, you know, KD, win-loss, etc. And uh, I got picked up by, uh, by a random player and we made a team. And now here we are, three years later. <laughs> that's crazy. So you picked up the game. I mean, of course you liked it, but you liked yeah. other games too. You picked yeah. up the game among other reasons, because you could start off early or you started off early. And as yeah. a result, you had a little bit of edge over the rest. Yeah, because when, it, like, let's, let's say that I start, let's say I've never played League of Legends before. Mm -hmm. We both know the game, so I think it's a decent example. I'm going to start playing. There's 100, what, 50 champions, maybe more, probably at this point. And there's, ru like, okay, rune system has changed now, what, ever, mastery, etc. <coughs> it, it takes me a couple thousand hours to even learn the game, right? Then I need to look at my opponents in pro play if I were to go pro. At the top, we have Faker, Korean teams, etc. Then we have EU LCS and LCS, etc. Um, it's very hard. Like, imagine going up against Bjergsen in your first amateur game. You're going to get Shrek, right? You're playing as a legacy, like, holder. Going pro in Rainbow Six Siege, you're being, playing, a bunch of, playing against a bunch of amateurs, casual gamers, first-time professional players, because the CSGO pros are not going to retire from CSGO to yep. try out Siege, right? Yep. The Overwatch pros are not going to retire from Overwatch to go pro in Siege. So everyone's at the same level. Everyone has the same amount of Twitter followers being zero. No one's known. And we're all the same people. So going pro in a new game like League of Legends was many, many years ago, that's the easiest, so to speak, but also the least um, like result in terms of reward. Because back then, when I went pro, the salaries were $100. Uh, first, we didn't have any. Then it was $100. Uh, price for the tournaments were $20,000. Now it's, you know, we're looking at a million for next invitationals in February, uh, two and a half years later. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at very low <clears throat> infrastructure and, and et cetera. So when yeah. a game is developed, you can kind of abuse it and go pro in it. But again, the reward is lower as well. Interesting. So do you think, so how do you think your attributes sort of, fit into into this game into rainbow six into a tactical super yeah. hyper tactical shooter game i actually think that my experience with league of legends and mobile games was one of the main reasons i succeeded because i, I agree with that yes games so i had terrible aim but i had some brain and i took a lot of pride in the fact that i could shock call and i not leap the team but i could motivate the team help the team and i could help strategy for the team um so I would just, you know, you know, drone for my team, gather information, be the support player, so to speak, um, put down my wards, you know, in bot lane and all, like in League of Legends, and then set up my carry players for success and 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 be a part of success with them. And then as the game went on, there was a character called Blackbeard that came out in year one, season two, but had a mm -hmm. face shield, which meant you couldn't kill him um, with headshots. And I was like, oh, I'm a terrible player. I'm going to pick up this extremely overpowered character and I'm going to use it as a handicap until I learn how to play the game properly. 
So in professional play, I was playing Blackbeard only to mask the fact that I was terrible at the game. And in my spare time, I was grinding 10, 12 hours a day with anything but Blackbeard to like catch up on the mechanics that I was bad at. And after um, almost a year of doing so, I found myself as a valid player amongst the top players in the, in the region. And um, and yeah, that's how it started. Like, but it was with League of Legends. I was like, I can shock all. I wow. So you, you're actually pretty hard on yourself. Every time I hear you talk, you really are not hard. Maybe it's just you think you're honest with yourself uh, in the sense of uh, you just, for example, said I'm terrible. I was terrible at aiming. I was terrible at X, Y, Z. Uh, I yeah. thought, uh, you know, my attributes would fit better into League of Legends, like things like that, right? <laughs> Which if you look yeah. at your actual uh, set of awards, it almost sounds ridiculous. Like it almost sounds like you're being fake humble. I know that's not the case, actually, because I've seen enough interviews from you to understand that's not the case. But why do you have that sort of vibe about you? Like what what is it that makes you always question uh, in almost a negative way your attributes and what's what's going on i'm not sure where it came from like originally but i've always been like i always expect to win a game so winning feels 10 percent good you know oh we won good i expected to win but when i lose it's it's a 70 percent bad feeling right so i need to win you know three four times to feel better than i do about losing once mm -hmm. and they're just talking regular games like casual games yep. ranked games um then you probably had a blast in League of Legends. I, oh, oh, <laughs> where I, the best I, I, player in the world I'm, may I'm, have I'm like 57% win rate. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm perma banned in League of Legends on a couple of accounts, not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> toxicity, yeah, feeding, etc. Like, <laughs> when I was young, it was like when I was 14, 15, etc. And I'm 20. Don't worry, I'm I'm the same way. Um, I mean, I was I was banned, but then I was unbanned because yeah. pro play, whatever. I can't even remember why I was unbanned. Yeah. Do you remember that, I mean, Joe? Why was I unbanned? In League of Legends. You're reformed. <laughs> they oh, say reformed. they say I'm Tyler reformed. One. <laughs> Tyler one. Tyler I'm not style. reformed. I'm still I'm still a spiteful Deep down. spiteful guy. Yeah. I, I, I hate losing. No, I mean I, I think it's the right mindset as a pro player, but um I don't know, I think the entire team I'm forgiving group... socially. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No it is. Um <laughs> but the entire roster of the G two Rainbow Six Siege team, we have the same mentality that yes, okay, we won, that's great. But what can we do better? And it comes from our coach, Shaz, as well, who's always enforcing that. Like, we win 6-0 in a practice game, and he goes, all right, boys, this is what we can fix. And we go, we just won 6-0, and you want us to do better. And he's like, yes, because we can play better. We can fix these things. So we're very hard on ourselves when we play bad, and we're very hard on ourselves, me specifically, and I think Fabian specifically, when we don't live up to the standards. Um I don't know. I just always overlook what I can do better rather than what I'm good at because I don't want to plateau, right? I don't yep. want to stall out. I want to continue to move forward because otherwise someone who wants my job more than I do will catch up and take my job away from me. So, so true. I got to work for it. So you mentioned this invitational for a million. <clears throat> yeah. Um, how, how, how's the energy and the motivation, the overall motivation oh. of the team? Uh, when we heard it, we were told uh, right before the announcement, a couple of days before, and we're like, a million? Like, wait, how many zeros again? Wait, are you <laughs> sure? Like, really, right? Because when we started, it was $20,000. And that was a lot of money. It still is. And now we're talking a million. That's like, we're talking, you know, we're talking a major for CSGO. We're talking a big event for, yep. for okay, though that's, you know, we have crowdfunding, of course. But we're talking bigger games. And we can kind of, kind of reach our hand a little bit up and be like, hey, I'm over here, right? Um, extremely excited. Not just because of the, like, money but the growth and the this the, you know step forward and I think reaching a million to the public eye is gonna attract a lot of attention. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we're actually a big deal now, or we're getting towards becoming a big deal. So um, talking about yeah. actual reach, um, looking at Rainbow Six's tournaments um, and viewership in those tournaments, like this is this game is actually comparable. Like I'm talking about even numbers with the likes of Overwatch League with the likes of Rocket League. Yeah. So why do you think in the people's eye, this is not, you know, uh, a fact? Like, why do you think, is it because it's too new? Why is it? Mm. 
I think I think one of the big issue is that it's it's not a spectator friendly sport or esport because oh, it's because very of the hard violent keep, thing right? you mean? Or... No, more like uh, it's hard to keep track of what's happening. It, it's like well, same goes in Overwatch and it still has pretty decent yes, viewership, right? Yeah, that, that's that's a really good argument because I was gonna say CS:GO is really simple, but you said Overwatch, which is not simple. It's and not that's simple. Hard to watch as well. yeah. it's not. No. And and Rainbow Six has equal if not more viewership, and yeah. uh, League of Legends is not easy to watch. Like I mean, unless I mean, okay, if you're a an experienced MOBA player, then you do know what's going on. Yeah, but. If you go to, out to the public, uh, you know, the broader gaming community, there's a good chance yeah. that they won't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know. It's the, a good the 2K question. guys, the, you know, the Call of Duty guys, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe they have a hard time understanding what MOBA is. Oh, they definitely would. Yeah. No, it's a good question because whenever people ask me, like, what can Siege do better for viewership or what can we do better to be validated in esports? Mm -hmm. Always the first thing that comes to mind is that I, as a poorly player, I have a hard time following what's happening in the game. Because the uh, spectator system isn't as uh, developed as it should be. I don't know, man. Seriously, like I think Pangolin, that this is pretty good. Like, it, I mean, no, it is good. It like, is good. I, I am not. Be better. I, I played this game by the time I watched the first tournament. I played. That was like a. That was the one in Atlanta. I think it was. It was like a couple of months ago, three months ago. Oh, New Jersey. Yeah. 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 That's accurate. Um, and uh, and that was my the first event I watched about Rainbow Six because I I heard. Stroud actually saying that oh. he he watched he was addicted to watching Rainbow Six Pro play actually mm, yeah um, and um, and so I I watched it and I swear to God I I fell in love because I never played that game at that point right yeah um, I played the game right before our next tournament that you guys played um, but uh, and, and I understood everything you know I of course I understood some classes that. That I wouldn't know what they do, but I understand the basics. It's pretty simple. Like also, yeah. I think the spectators do a pretty good job. Honestly, I think the spectator mode is also pretty nice. It's understandable. Um, you know, colors are clear. It's red and blue. Maybe yeah. one thing that is that it wasn't clear to me is that when you're attacking, you sometimes have blue. I mean, it's just fifty percent chance. You you have yeah. blue, and that's like counterintuitive because what yeah. they do is yeah. that they keep the color on the teams and not on the sides. Exactly. Uh, which could be a little confusing. Yeah. But other than that, it just felt really good. No, I think you're right. I just don't know what else I would point at except for that personally, because I don't know. I mean, the game has it has a cheap version so people can buy it if you know you just want to try it. It has an expensive version to support the game and to unlock everything. Mm -hmm. We have decent uh, we have good viewership on land tournaments but a lot less viewership on like regular pro league the weekly, i mean it's still 35k 40k which is it's literally still 35K, it's which still is literally rocket league it, and yeah. it's literally uh, halfway through the seasons of overwatch games it's the same thing oh, okay okay i wasn't aware yep. i don't know what 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 the issue would be then actually because um i always look at spectator and i just I, I would like a little bit more just so but i'm also Again, I'm a pro league player. I look for different things than just like watching. That's true. A That's a good point. I, you know, I want to I want to dig really deep into analytics. You, you know what I like doing? This is off topic, but it'll help okay. you also understand. You know what I do to uh, understand whether we are as G2 esports doing a good job, like overall, like simplicity. I'm talking about simple stuff. I okay. I have um, so once every maybe two weeks or maybe a bit more, I'll have a, a what I call in my calendar as a day as a fan and essentially four oh. hours approximately where i just do what a fan would do yeah. everything you know i would just go to try to buy something i mean i wouldn't end up buying it or maybe i do i mean i haven't done it yet but maybe i should do that like how many clicks does it take me to like buy something like just you like useful stuff that allows me to see how yeah. people from their eyes from their less focused in the business eyes feel about the company you know yeah. And, and and this is just to explain that people that are new to the game or your average viewer, like 80% of the viewership comes from people like me, actually, which yeah. is not, I mean, they're, we are fellow gamers. We love games, but we're not necessarily, you know, as experienced in Rainbow Six as you are, for example. Of course not. So as a result, you probably focus on things that we don't even know should be there exactly. or, right exactly yeah and and i think like from my point of view there's everything's improvable but from my point of view it's a pretty good i mean really show uh, uh, i like it and 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 if there is one thing i would say 
is that they should never be worried about this violent thing that many people talk about, which Counter Strike, yeah, uh, you know, gets spoken about. Like, just embrace it. At the end of the day, somebody who thinks that these games are too violent to be followed, uh, they don't. They don't even deserve one second to to be explained <laughs> otherwise. You know. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't check out. You know, it just doesn't check out. No, it's it doesn't. Pre- it doesn't. Same people that watch Mission Impossible Fallout, which, by the way, is a fantastic movie. <laughs> Like Tom Cruise is a fucking god. Seriously, Tom God is amazing. Yeah. You, did you watch the movie, by the way? I did watch the movie. Yeah. I it's did. fuck. Honestly, <laughs> did you watch the movie production? No. You have to believe me, okay? okay? That movie is sick. It's within my top seventeen movies of all time. It's pretty solid. Top seventeen. Top 17. Yes, it's a odd number, but it's what it is. Oh, top seventeen, maybe eighteen. 17. Maybe top eighteen. <laughs> if you are, if you are. Thor Ragnarok. Like, it must be at the mm. level of Thor Ragnarok. So it's good movies. Really good movies. That one was good. That anyway. Was I, I watched Thor Ragnarok, actually, before we... Fucking before good, we eh? Go away. I, I, so, I'm, I hated it. I fell asleep after 20 minutes. Okay, what? But, yeah, see, see, see. Then I gave myself a second chance. Or, Ragnarok a second chance. I rewatched it. And here comes a good part. So that I loved it. Right? Oh, I yes. I rewatched it. And with a new mindset, I was like, Man, wow, Thor! this is pretty good. Thor! Yeah. And Thorn. Exactly. Thor is insane! Thor yeah. is insane. <laughs> insane. Have you watched Ragnarok production? Okay, you did. How do you like it? Mm-hmm. How good? Uh, you have to be more expressive, man. I'm literally recording a podcast. You have to show me some emotions. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, that guy loved the movie. But I can't show that because he shows no emotions. He's like, no. a, he's like a, I, have a psych, I have a serial killer here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. That's I got it. a serial killer. God damn it. No, it was solid. Soundtrack and everything, I really enjoyed it. Anyway, the sure. point was, this same guy that is arguing against violent games is probably the same guy that loved Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> which is fucking, it's just whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, which is funny, right? Because, yeah, it's all about perspective in that regard, I guess. I, I did a but, tweet. Yeah. I, I'm just doing self-promotion here, mindlessly, you know? Yeah. Self-promotion. Um, I did a tweet, which is... All these people that ra- that go crazy over killing somebody in a game mm-hmm. should understand that I'm not trying to. I mean, I, that if I kill you, I have not killed you in person. I just no, showed you no. that I am smarter, faster, better, yeah, or more accurate, or all three together at the same time, yeah. right? And yeah. and and that's what people need to get their mind into. It's literally a fucking avatar. Nothing's happened. No, I mean, exactly. It's, it's I mean, unbelievable. I, I always say that you know, in, in real life sports, you're restricted by physique and attributes and muscle mass and, and and like how much weight you you have or don't have and whatnot. But in video games, we don't really have any of those factors in play, so anyone can participate. No, nope. you can be missing both your legs. You you can still do well. Like, now now things are changing though. Not missing job now with VR. And uh, yeah. once technology gets better in VR, AR, and things of this nature, whew, like there will be at some point, like right now, a soccer, the best soccer player in the world, yeah, he may be, I guess, smart, but he, that's not his main attribute. His main attribute is, you know, let's say Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Or Messi, just because mm. otherwise it'll get, <laughs> I'll get jumped on. Um, uh, you know, they're fast, they're physically gifted, right? But yeah. there may not be the most intelligent people on earth or whatever having the attributes that you need to have to be a great league of legends player or rainbow six player right but then and then you have the rainbow six players right you have pengu that is just gifted in many regards but then I'm, maybe i give you a football and you're like the fuck is going on like <laughs> i don't know if that's the case but um yeah. but there will be a moment in which you'll need to be gifted in both areas because yeah. vr technology will get so much better like maybe imagine imagine an arena i always go down to an arena it's my world of warcraft times oh, coming yeah. in hot oh uh, yeah yeah uh, imagine yeah. being in an arena and you're having your avatar there you're controlling your avatar like physically you know like you're yeah. moving your fucking gravity neutral thing and like imagine that and then you just throw spells and like, and like sweating and like thinking fast and boom 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 you know what i mean yeah. that'd be the ultimate yeah. Super athlete. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. Super esports athlete at that point, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's like these people will have to train not only their minds and how fast and well they play the game, but also but they bodies. need to do some 
Exactly. Some some. Yeah. How is this thing called? The, these guys that created uh, from California this sport that is weightlifting, but it's not weightlifting. It's like CrossFit. CrossFit. Oh, CrossFit. Yeah. 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 They need to be CrossFit legends to be yeah. the best at the game. Basically. I can't. I mean, we already time. see nowadays that in esports, a lot of people do work out and eat healthier and you know, drink a lot. That water is true. Increasingly, so it is increasing. Yeah. Before you could see many more unfit, like heavily unfit, almost yeah. unhealthily unfit yeah. um, players, and and that is slowly, slowly changing. There's still a lot, but that is still slowly changing. And and at some point you realize that you gotta sit down in front of a computer for many hours. And I can tell you from experience, I've always been healthy. Uh, maybe not the things I eat because I <laughs> at some point uh, I took too many way too many McDonald's you know yeah well, still do once there. a week uh, okay. but it's my cheat day so I can do whatever I want mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but I, I still fair. got I still got so many problems on my back and neck like yeah, yeah. seriously I had to I cannot say that enough it's it's pretty bad you honestly the, the reason why I went to gym and I'm going to gym now. I started yeah. a year and a half ago is because of that. Like I started with so much back and neck pain and I was like, you know, I was doing like this all like, yeah, like, you know, you're fucked I up when you have to do that. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it, it really fucks you up. So imagine if I would have been heavily overweight during those nine years of competition, I would have been destroyed, like maybe life lasting consequences. Yeah. I mean, it takes a toll on your body for sure. And we need to look, even though your esports career might be short term, you know, until you're 30, if you're really good or whichever, you also need to look at what's going to happen when you're done, right? Because, okay, your back survived three esports, but let's say you get a, you know, a real life physical heavy job and you have a terrible back from esports, that will affect your future, you know, life. Absolutely. So, so long term is important. What, what would you like to do after your career is over? Uh, oh, I mean, your professional career. Yeah. What do you like? That's all. See, see, I, I have two minds to this. One way, I really want to figure it out. So I have like a plan. Mm -hmm. And another way, I don't want to, you know, think about what happens when it's over because I don't want it to be over. That's okay. That's okay. Um, but in reality, I would like to, to, to not necessarily do what, do what you do per se, but like be in esports, right? Either a coach or a psychiatrist or mm -hmm. org owner or manager or, or something or a cast or even like anything really. Mm -hmm. um, be in the scene because I would like to. I call myself the second generation of esports athletes. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's any truth, but like we had the first ones that that really branched it out. That's a good point. Put yeah. down the road. You're definitely now, on the on the second. Yeah, that be that makes yeah, sense to me. Because I can look up to some people who's made something out of themselves in the scene, and now I can. Yeah, they couldn't do that because they're the first. Um, and I would like to help build the next generation and just grow esports and whatnot. So I would like to stay in and contribute as much as possible. So what do you like aside playing games? Like, what is your <laughs> you know like i mean honestly yeah, yeah i don't even know if hobbies like it's more like what would you have done if you wouldn't have this job right now in your ideal yeah. world in my ideal world i would be i would have graduated last year actually <clears throat> as a psychology and english major with okay. a semi in, in biology and i would have either gone the biology way and and you know gone in that direction or i would have gone the psychology way and, and have a work in that area um, so how do you how a, how will you be ten years from now? Should you have not been in esports? Oh, ten years from now, I would have probably live in the U.S. Uh, oh. with a job revolving in in psychology. Uh, hopefully within esports in some way. I, I feel like that's where I would like to be. Because if I yeah, but before you before you knew this before, existed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, before esports. Oh no, I wanted to be a doctor when I was a kid. That's like what I wanted. And then when I grew up, you know, five years ago, I was like lawyer, right? Good money. <laughs> um, yeah, but, lawyers but, make good yeah. money. Can can attest yeah. to it? Can confirm. But if I had to do it now, looking away from esports, I think it would be more something more physical. Because like now, one of the things that I would like to do the most, despite not doing it, is actually work out and be a little bit healthier and like kind of improve myself and my body and, my, and like the, the thing that runs my brain. Um, but in what aspect, I actually do not know. I have no idea. All right, fair enough. That's also a fine a fine answer. Um. You know, there's this. You know who Gary Vaynerchuk is? I have no idea. He's an he's an entrepreneur celebrity mm. that built his brand through internet. It's pretty much right. And he was like a yeah. hustler. He started with podcasts and like AMAs and like 
you know, things that literally 12 people watched on average. Yeah. And then he just worked himself up. Like every fucking day he would have one or two videos coming out. And and now he's like, I mean, the guy's a hustler, fucking good. Like he, and he has an incredible wine liners, like boom, 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 boom. He yeah. comes in super, super nice guy. I mean, super wise guy. And, and, and he actually said something that I find very nice, which is that sometimes like people overreact in a negative way when they don't know what, what, they, what they want to do. Like, this yeah. is so simple. Just try. You don't like something, yeah. fucking move. You yeah, like something, it, stay. Right? Like, yeah. it's just try, you know, try. And he said, you know how many things I have tried differently until I found uh, what I liked and uh, what I loved and I found it and I keep doing it right now? Yeah. It's a lot. So he just embraces that and and it's just so true, man. At the end of the day, you it's just so hard to know what you like until you literally test. Yeah, you find it, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and that's where I was a bit worried with, with, with education because you need to choose like what direction without mm -hmm, trying, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I think that's the hard part for for a lot of young people these days because you don't get to try it out beforehand. You need to make the decision and then go into it. Yep. And then if you don't like it, then you can go elsewhere, right? Yep. Um, but you're a little bit more committed, of course, when it comes to education. But but good point. Yeah. It's actually just how crazy it is. Like I find I find it super crazy the fact that there's so many examples of people that say follow your passion, it'll make you more successful, which may mm -hmm. be true, but there are definitely cases that is not true. More certainly, <laughs> like more often than not, you'll find those. And and then you have examples like Andrea Gassi or like many of the t tennis players, they literally play tennis. On, a, on the on the highest level because their families, their parents force yeah. them to play and they fucking hate it. Like in this book yeah. from Andrea Gassi, he says, I yeah. hate, I hate playing tennis, but it's what it, it's the only thing I know how to do, play tennis. Yeah. So I just play yeah. tennis and and he's like a legend, you know? Uh, so many people are like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And like, I don't think there's a single answer. I think you can just, like you can fail or succeed either doing thousand things or doing one. Yeah. Um, focusing on a thousand things or focusing on one. It's just, just, just so many people um, succeeding in so many different ways. It's hard to grasp common denominators in those successful people. I think that's a good point, actually, because, um, you know, I, I did the same thing in, in esports where I just tried like seven different games until I found one I could actually succeed at, mm -hmm. you know, whereas I could have just kept going at, at League of Legends. I could have kept trying. I yeah, maybe you would have been fucking amazing maybe, at some point, yeah, right? Yeah, maybe I had a breaking point a year later. I don't know. Um, but I was like, okay, it failed. I'm not going to keep trying. We'll go next thing and next thing and next thing. Um, no, yeah, for sure. What Do you think uh, Rainbow Six has the most supportive community? Like, I think for it me, has... it feels like that. Certainly, it has a very it, it's a, so it's very it's a very interesting relationship because they are it's probably one of the most like supportive communities in certain aspects. Like I remember when 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 you guys came in with D two, I mean that was people loved it, right? NIP they came in, they loved it. Cloud Nine came in, they loved it. They were very welcoming, very supportive. Um, but we also do have the occasional witch hunt, which I think all communities have, right? Um, where like we narrow down this topic, we're like, oh, this is a bad thing. We're gonna chase it and talk <laughs> about it and and figure out and expose it. Um, but no, I'm actually very very happy with how it's a very personal scene because it is smaller and it obviously it has grown a lot. But I'm very surprised by how supportive it is still today with the growth it's had. Because I was a little bit afraid that would be lost in the process as we grew. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, it's very supportive. So why do you think? People love you so much. You're hands down the most, um, the most marketable player, the most loved by the community. Why do you think that is? I think I'm. The, I, I want to start by saying I think I'm the most loved and probably one of the most uh, disliked personalities. Right. Currently, maybe more lovable than hateable. But both but... of them typically go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, because personality overshines. Yeah, um, I don't know why that is. I think I think I have a story that people can resonate with. You know, having a hard time in school, didn't have the nicest of you know growing up. I I kind of came with no experience. You know, I didn't have like an, a a guru or a motivator really. I didn't have F FPS experience. I I think in one way, I inspire that anyone can do what they put their mind towards, and I think that's like the, my work ethic that. 
I was raised with a mom working two or three different jobs. And the most hours she worked, the more money she would make. And I think growing up with my mom doing that for so many years, uh, being a single parent to me and my brother, I, I was like, oh, if I play or I put in this much work and I dedicate myself this much, the reward that I will get in, you know, skill increase or whichever, that will also be higher because I put in more effort. And I, I think that's what people look at and they're like, wow, I mean, that that's a good mindset to have because why would you not want to fully invest into something if that's what you truly want to achieve, right? right. Because a lot of people, they yes, they want to be a pro player or yes, they want to become an entrepreneur or yes, they want to succeed with grades, but they don't really commit 100%. They commit 70 and they're like, oh, it's fine. You know, I'll still get there. I just don't want to get as high as I want to. Whereas I'm like, oh, I want to get there 110% and I'm just going to commit so much towards it. I'm going to tunnel vision, which in this case is a good thing, I think. Um, other than that, I'm not sure. I just think that it's easy to love someone who's good at the game because it's, you know, bandw bandwagon fans, as we call them as well. I, obviously, there's a lot of true fans out there. I have played the game for three years and, and I was one of the veterans and I still am. But I think uh, it's easy to love a team or a player that is successful because of the whole bandwagon hype. Because when we were at Invitationals, um, there was like a lot of ET chance when we were losing. And then when we started winning, more and more Penta chance, it were named Penta back then before we got picked up by G2, mm -hmm. a lot of Penta chance came in. And I was like, so now we're chanting for us because we're winning. And and I think it's like- well, a, I think a, that's esports in a nutshell. Like we I, celebrate- Exactly, I, th I think it's celebrating and cheering for success, right? Yep. In one way. Um, Which is beautiful, I mean. It is super beautiful. And it means so much to me as a player. But I also think that's why a lot of people love us because we have found the most success of any team uh, almost undefeated for two years straight, almost. Um, and I think that's also why a lot of people love us because we have had that continuous like, let's go Penta, let's go G2, right? And 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 as we continue to build that, I just think that the amount of fans will increase. Um, and once we fail, once we have a slumber, once we have a downfall, once we stop in performing at this crazy level, I just wish and hope that Yes, they will cheer for the names, but I hope that we will be amongst them, like in their hearts and their spirits, and that they will continue to support us. Um, people playing from you play don't play against people from Steam, right? Uh, they do. They oh, do. they do. So it's they irrelevant. Yeah, where you? It's irrelevant. The only thing is that the Steam charge player viewer base doesn't count the you play version. Right. So of course. The Steam like average daily number is a lot differently than the actual. And Steam still version. is like top six. Uh, from any game actually yeah, in Steam. Yeah. So it has it's to like, be like top two, top three. It's and pretty, pretty up there. And we also have console. I know it's different platform, yeah. but the console scene is actually bigger in player base last time I checked than the PC scene. So do they though. Like I mean I know Counter Strike but Dota don't have, but uh, yeah. the likes of Rocket League does have. Same oh, goes yeah. for uh, PUBG, etc. Um yeah. but yeah it, this is I mean the game is I have to check the because the last time I checked um so for previous month the trend was going up still. I have to check for this month, which I don't think is changing. And it, it was going up considering summer as well, which is which is actually quite incredible. Um, but the is game- It's actually still increasing. I just checked Still right increasing. Well, we had a, so August, we had a 8.17% uh, gain. Mm -hmm. Average players is uh, about 80, 70, 73 to 80,000 uh, players. Yep. Peak is 130. 35k players and then last month for last 30 days we've had a six percent increase that's incredible fucking yeah. summer yeah the, so the, we, you know how going. hard are those games grow in summer like if you check popularity of PUBG, for example yeah last 30 yeah. days it went down like i think six to ten percent it has to be yeah um so so honestly it just goes to show how much uh more popular this game is getting uh, no for sure and it sure. seems like the more people play, the more they like it and the more they keep kind of playing it. It's a little bit different than games like Fortnite where and skill selling is actually quite low. And as a result, you get a lot of user acquisition, so new players, but not a lot of user retention. Like I've played the game for 30 hours only and, and I, I got bored out of my mind. Uh, you know, in a way, same thing happened to Overwatch, although maybe it's because of other reasons, I don't know, but same thing happened to Overwatch. So Rainbow Six as a game, what do you yeah. think? It, it's what do you think from inside it's heading? Because from outside, I can tell you it does look like it's growing very fast. Uh, but from inside, how does it feel? You know, uh, you're in touch with the community, you're in touch with the publisher. 
you're in touch with the meta changes, every patch that comes in. How does it yeah. feel? I, I think it feels the same way, you know, growing and succeeding because we have, we have community feedback. I'm in touch with Reddit. We have Twitter. We have forums. Uh, we have a direct line with developers that we use in Discord. Um, you know, we have also with publishers and then, uh, you know, we have um, articles, interviewers, etc. So there's more and more attention towards it. There's more and more like want from other people mm -hmm. wanting to see Siege. So from an insider perspective, you can definitely feel a lot more people pulling the strings and kind of pulling you like, oh, can we talk to you about this? Mm -hmm. Can we talk to you about that? Your opinion on this topic? That's nice. And uh, it, it's really nice. It, even though it is stressful, you know, the environmental change, you know, we went from no one really seeing looking at us to a lot of people looking at us. It's, it's a definitely for the better. Fair enough. Um, in terms of the game, because when, when, you, when you first played the game, it was much different than when you play the game right now. Yes. What sir. changed in between? Oh, oh everything changed. Um, meta game wise, the game got, I guess people understood the game. You know, when League of Legends came out, you didn't really have dedicated, you know, top lane characters and mid lane characters. And mm -hmm. lane people characters. just play whatever they wanted. Exactly. You played what you wanted and you built the items you wanted because you didn't know any better. And Siege was the same way. You would play operators that are currently in the game, but you wouldn't utilize them correctly, and you also wouldn't use the counteracts to them correctly. Whereas now, everyone understands the game so much. We have YouTube guys, we have videos, or so even the non-pro league players, they play the game at a much, much higher level than we did in pro play two years ago. Um, where now, you need to understand exactly what's going on and how to tear it apart, and you need to do all of that you know, the five-man squad in cohesion mm -hmm. while communicating and acting really fast. So for somebody that's new for this game, or to this game, yeah, give us the perfect example of a counter okay. in this game. So I think the most, I think my favorite one, because it's so simple, but it defines the game so well, is that uh, on defense, you have two reinforcements each, which means you can make a regular wood wall into mm -hmm. a metal wall, which only a hard breacher on enemy team can breach. Mm -hmm. So by making it a... a middle wall you need to pick a thermite a hibane or a maverick which are three of the attacking operators Maverick just came out last week um and released to, uh last night for all non-season people users. seem to like him he he's very strong he has a nice gun it feels good gadget is fun only those operators can breach the walls and a counter to that is that with a bandit charge on defense or a mute gem on defense if you put those down they cannot breach it only maverick can but before it came out you know, before a week ago how can they not reach you Exactly. So the bandit charge will destroy the charges because it's electrified, and the mute jammer will block the signal so that you can't. Uh, you can put the charge down on the wall, but you can start it, right? Oh. So you reinforce the wall, which means you need to hard breach it. Then you bandit it, which means they have to get rid of the bandit. So then you pick a Thatcher on attack, which is like uh, the perfect support for a hard breacher. And he can throw an EMP on, on the floor, which will destroy all gadgets, all, you know. Um, Interesting. In, yeah, all in an area. Put down. In an area, exactly. It has like a, I think it's a seven meter radius, and you have three of them. So they banded it, you thatcher it, then you can breach. But then another element comes in. Something called bandit juggling was something that people found out you could do about two years ago. This was not a thing back when we played in year one, but now it's a thing. So bandit has four bandit charges, which means you can put down four batteries at the same time or mm -hmm. one by one. And batteries for what? So the batteries to the wall so that they can breach it, right? So okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they're called the batteries, yeah. But the Thatcher, who can destroy those bandit charges with the with the EMP, only has three grenades. So therefore, bandit has one spare. So if you know, you put a bandit charge, you EMP it, put a bandit charge, EMP it, put a bandit charge, EMP it, bandit will still have one spare charge. So what you will end up doing is that you're going to start doing construction work on the map. You're going to go <laughs> a floor above the bandit, open the floor so that you can sit there and put the bandit charges down. Um, but how the meta developed was that when early in the day, you wouldn't do any of this. You know, bandit wouldn't even put down a battery because he didn't know any better. But <laughs> now we've seen an evolution where, you know, we have a counter and then we have a counter to the counter, but then the counter doesn't work so effective consistently that you need to do a third counter, which is going to do vertical play for the floors because mm -hmm. the map is uh, destructive. I see. So uh, very simple, but really, really... Um, but you blind peek, right? Exactly, but you blind peek it. So you don't actually know these things until you utilize your So drones. you can only guess that a team yeah, will play yeah. a certain way. Exactly. You guess it or you assume it. 
And then on a tag, you have two drones each, and you can sacrifice those drones to gather information or intel. And then you can, you know, you can sacrifice a drone like, oh, they have a bandit, right? I see. And then, and then, you know, defenders, they know they have a bandit because they picked it, but they might not know that you have a heart breacher. So the bandit needs to put down the charge, which baits out the MP. So there's a I lot see. of kind of. So who's the thing. one that typically picks early? Is the one that it's an obvious one, like the drone? Yeah, so the, the drone will always like look for information first, right? right? And then you will send in your aggressive players first. Which um, are the ones that are easy to expect, right? Like you just Exactly. Yeah. You know, you pick an ash and you have a good gun. Okay. The gadget is not that strong. Or it's okay. strong, but it doesn't matter much. Mm -hmm. But then once your heart breacher, let's say Thermite, breaches the wall, his gadget has been utilized. He's now just a walking gun. He has no other purpose, right? So your primary support player who couldn't do anything is now an incredible fracking operator because that he only has a gun. So the roles kind of shift as you utilize your, your utility. So, you know, go get place for our team and he cannot die in the first minute because if he does, we lose the round. But the second Why? that he has to, because if he dies before breaching the wall, we have no way to attack the bomb site, right? So we need to get to a stage, you know, go into the map, get map control. I mean, it's, still, it's still physically possible. It's just it, really okay, tough, right? It's still okay. physically possible, but okay. if the enemy team plays it perfectly, it's basically impossible. Well, what, are, like, what is the percentage, like good team against good team of yeah. the team that lost his, you know, their own Goga to win yeah. the round? Let, let's say it's 50-50 from the beginning. That's fair, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. Everyone's alive. If Goga dies in this case, the Fraud Breacher, it's like a 80 to 20 oh or 85 15. that's so crazy the difference yeah Oof. exactly so not just goes to Goga... show how tactically how tactically um stressful this game is it is because goga wants to help right as a heart preacher but he also cannot risk exposing himself to the point where he might risk dying right but he also cannot stay useless because they're playing four versus five. So it's a very that's fine awesome. line that he dance between. Oh man, that sounds so fun. I just want to pick up the game and play it. Oh my no, God. No, no, no. I mean, honestly, like, especially if you play with friends and you can coordinate these things and be like, oh, can you help me out here? Can you, you know, do this for me? The game becomes a lot more engaging because you do need to like throw around resources and you need to ask for them. I right? need to communicate it. So the game is fun. Game is good. But if you play with a friend or two friends, the game is actually incredible. That's awesome. I, I really, I really, I'm really feeling it right now. What would you say are, let, let's go teammate by, after teammate, because I know you guys love each other and yeah. there has to be some sort of brotherhood there to make it work so well for so long. I mean, I guess some, some are not there for as long, but, um, there's, um, there's certainly very good, yeah. uh, you know, synergy. Like what can you tell me about, about Kanto, for example, what what are his attributes? What makes him special? <laughs> Kanto is like, um, you know, that weird cousin you only see at Christmas, mm -hmm. and he's he, he's really nice, but he's also kind of weird. And but Kanto's attribute is, we we call it the no fucks given factor. Like okay. that that's a literal term because you tell Kanto to do the impossible, and, and he, he just repeats and gets kills, yeah, and he will do the impossible over and over again, and not only to try and succeed, but he will more often than not actually succeed or go even. Is that mechanics? Uh, yeah, like that. That's, that, that's that. That's like his talent as well. Like, like I'm a brainer. Fabian's a brainer. Kento is like uh, the miracle maker. That's what we call them. And Junas kind of works the same way. And they're both Finnish, so they're the Finnish miracle duo. That's what we call them. Okay. Surprise factor. Okay, so Jonas and and Kanto are pretty similar, correct? Yeah, they're very similar. Yeah. Okay. And and they they often pick up the heavy guns, right? Like the good guns. Oh yeah. Oh them yeah. They, they're they're the fraggers of the team. Okay. 100%. Okay. Then let's talk about Goga then. Oh yeah, Goga is the uh, we call I call him the support pillar because not only is he in the game, does he play a support role and he plays it really, really, really well. Probably one of the best, if not the best, support player ever. Um, and he's Spanish, which is great, of course. Um, Why is he great? And not because terrible. you're Spanish, also that that's great. Okay. Okay, Listen, it's, it's great because you're in the podcast. It's the brotherhood. There's exactly. a... <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of good and a lot of questionable about being Spanish. No, we, no, no, no. We are we are creative, but we like siesta. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are heavy also siesta sure. doers. But uh, Goga is also like our support pillar outside the game. Not in the sense that he will 
uh, always be positive because no one's always positive, but he will like never be negative. He will always, he's the last one to tilt ever. He's the last one to complain. He's the last one to mention something. Like if my game is like lacking because my PC is terrible, I'm going to be like, oh my God, you know, I miss a shot because my PC is lacking. And I'm going to be like, sorry guys, I'm, I'm, my PC is bad. But Goga, he would just play on that bad PC and he wouldn't say a thing the entire game. That's and crazy. And he just tries hardest. And then when the game is over and you ask him, Go get why did you have a you know a bad game? He would say, Oh, my, my PC was actually lagging the entire time. But he would never say that Interesting. to his teammates ever. Um, which is a very, very big asset you can have as a player, I think. Now Fabian. Well, Fabian is we said it multiple times, both in the introduction video and we said it in interviews. Mm -hmm. He is the supreme leader of the team. He is it's never his fault, right? If something goes wrong. And he loves like hoarding us around the map, like his small peasants and pawns. <laughs> and like that. that's, um, that, that's how he does it. Like, he's like, guys, if you don't tell me what to do, I can't control you. And we're like, do we really want to be controlled? Like, I, I think we can think for ourselves. But he's like, no, you need to be controlled. Um, so no, he, he's like probably one of the smartest players as like a leader figure in the game for sure. Whereas Junus and Kenzo, they're smart mechanically, as you said, like they're good fraggers. Um, but Fabian is, is really good at like zooming out and like seeing the bigger picture with the map control and, and how we should approach next. Um, and him and I, we in-game lead together. Mm -hmm. Whereas he's very good at the, you know, up point of view when we have map control. I'm very good at kind of digging down into specifics. I'm very good at orchestrating um, how to lock down the bomb site. But Fabian gives me the map control so that we can lock down the bomb site. I see. So we have like a one, two, three. Fabian starts, you know, the first minute of the round. Then I take the next minute or so, and then Goga, he will control how and where to plant. I he see. Always so we have like a very nice... Um, is that a thing on every, on every team? There's like a planter? Uh, There definitely is a planter, but I don't think it's common, not to my knowledge, that you have three people calling because it clutters the comms a lot, mm -hmm. right? Having three different... Yeah, it requires a lot of structure. It does. It does require a lot of structure. But we're also the only team, second only team in the world that is English speaking, despite not being our any of our native languages. So I'm from Denmark. We have a yeah, which by the way is more of a challenge. Uh, that uh, is a challenge, right? Two Finnish players, Spanish player, Danish player, and Swedish also player. Finnish players. To understand Finnish players, you need a Accent. translator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a translator <laughs> or two. Um, and, and then, you know, we have heavy accents and we have you know, restricted vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, and we and yet we have your English is perfect talking. though. I gotta say, like your English is literally perfect. Yeah, my, mine's the best, and then Fabian's the second, and then we have the others, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> it does, but, but, <laughs> but that, that's what we say. Like, doesn't like, surprise me. The Spanish and the two Finnish <laughs> no, guys no. have the worst English in the team. Yep, no, I would have never guessed. I nope, that never. would have been impossible. Yep, but but that's the case. Uh, just this one time, of course. Um, <laughs> but that's the case, and. Despite having those issues, or having those, not issues, but having those um, restrictions, we still utilize three people out of five talking a lot, whereas most teams utilize one or two. Yeah, and it's probably and, the, the best one because having yeah. the, two re the, the two other guys is being focused on getting headshots. That's, yeah, exactly. That's a good exactly. point. We can enable them to go crazy, and at the same time, they will not talk much, which means that we can actually, us three, just focus on doing that. Um, it just works out really well, like how many ways? That's awesome. Um, and then you, yourself, attributes. Um, see, this is hard. It's always hard to speak well of yourself. Um, I think what they it's say, just, but I don't find that's it as what hard. They say. No, but you, of course not, Oslot. Of course not. Um, no, I think... Um, a, a high ego is... Uh, is I mean, high ego. A <laughs> high enough ego is not a bad thing. High enough, yeah. Confidence. Confidence is not a bad thing. I think it's it's a little bit the same as Fabian. It's, it's the brain mechanics, um, being able to communicate my train of thought and being able to rely on information very successfully. Mm -hmm. um, because you have a lot of ways to communicate in Siege. There's a lot of factors, as you said. And you can say, there's a guy on this door, right? Which means, okay, my teammate now knows there's a guy there. But what you really wanted to say is that I need help with this guy on the door right. from this angle, right? So what a lot of people fail to do on a competitive level in Siege, in my opinion, is that in the heat of the moment, you know, with restricted English, it's hard to rely what you want versus what you actually end up doing. And I'm very good at being uh, actively calling what I want rather than what I think I want. So I'll, I'm very good at saying, I need to run down the staircase and take this angle for me and hold it. Yeah. Right. Whereas some, a lot of people would go, there's a guy on the door. 
And yeah, then he dies, I, I hear and you. you go, oh, oh, no one hold the door. This is actually you know a I mean? big problem, and it's very low key. Uh, like it's yeah. not, it's not even understood as a big problem many times. I see when I was a player actually in, in League of Legends. I remember when we were tilted out of our minds in a game. Yeah. Then people would still like we would say, "Come on, guys, communicate." But people would say like, "Bot lane, no flash." Yeah. That's it. Like, bot lane has no flash. Yeah. You or, wouldn't say bot lane has no we're flash. We're pushed. Gank, right? Yeah, exactly. We're being pushed. It's like yeah. you're like people don't, at some point when you're tilted, you don't take responsibility over what's happening, and you yeah. and you don't say what you just said. You know, hey, I'm gonna be ganked bottom. If there's a highly like likeliness that I'm gonna be ganked bottom because we're losing bot lane. That's taking yeah. responsibility over what's going on in the in the game. But when yeah. you're tilted and you're not confident enough, then you're gonna be like bot no sums. We're being pushed. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Like, and then again, what can your jungler do with that information? Exactly. Right? And the jungler needs to think for him, like for you. Yeah. And, For sure. and maybe and maybe then he needs to ask, do you need help? And it, it's it's a wasted question because if you need help, you should say, bottom lane, no summoners, mm -hmm. I need help. Yeah, right? and then just asking the question, you're yeah, you're making them already hesitate because need help, like they already get you know fuck up with their brain, like well fuck, yeah. do I need help? Like exactly. It 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 kills their ego as well a bit. Like it's it does. having somebody actually like Fabian in a way, uh, where you just have a. Somebody that is just raw, uh, classic German uh, uh, <laughs> effectiveness in regards effectiveness, to like, yeah. yeah. I, I, I guess I, I, would, I was about to call it unpoliteness, but mm. sometimes that unpoliteness is just the best thing you can have because no, people sure. get used to, yeah. okay, so it's all about the victory. It's, it's not yeah. about my emotions. It's not about what I feel about losing lane. At some point, I'll be losing lane, right? At some yeah. point, at some, in some game, I'll be losing lane or I'll be having yeah. a shitty game in Rainbow Six. Uh, but it's how I, what I do with that that's happening that, yeah, that exactly. really matters, right? No, 100%, because we, we have the same saying where uh, we're known in Siege to never lose on like a time running out. We're mm -hmm. always very proactive with time. It's something that mm -hmm. a lot of casters, they talk to us about. And we always say that we would rather lose a round trying to achieve something than to not try and lose out on time by doing nothing, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's the same thing with this. Like, I, I would rather have us just try to make something happen than to just, like, not make anything happen. Yep. I hear you. Um, well, very good. Well, I think everybody got to learn a lot about Rainbow Six, about yourself, the team in general. Uh, okay. your, your emotions and energy and motivation coming into the next tournaments. Japan! Which is coming oh, yes. up soon. Best of luck there. I hope you guys have good fun. I don't. I, I don't know if I've ever. I, I got asked this the other day actually. Have I ever yeah. been in Japan? I don't even know. I can't remember. You don't even know. I can't remember. I can't remember whether I was in fucking Japan or not. I can't remember. Hmm. That's fucked up. That is messed up. That just means you travel a lot, though, right? That, that, that's, what, that's what I got told, which is yep. true. Yep. Um, and I love, by the way, no regrets. Yes. Uh, no, no traveling regrets. is the is the single best thing that happened to me. When you yeah. travel, you have context of the world, new cultures, religions. You realize everything is pretty much the same. Yeah, there's not that much different out there. Um, so we learned a little bit Rainbow Six, which is a fantastic thing. The game is growing undeniably. You just you gave us proof, yes, on Steam statistics. that even in summer that is the case, yes, which sir. is crazy. Yeah. Um, now what's left is what I do or ask for my own sake, mm. uh, which is yeah. I want to learn where you're entertained by, because I may pick up some of it to entertain myself. Oh, no. Best movies. Oh, best movies. Like, let's say top three. The first one that comes to mind, just like without thinking, is The Revenant. With oh, Nadia The Revenant Cabrillo. is actually really yeah. good. Yeah, it was filmed in natural lighting in all winter terrain, oh, right? Okay. Which I love snow, I love winter, etc. And the soundtrack, like the whole... um. There's a scene Andy where you see... Andy is fucking insane. Like, say... Andy Capri is insane. And he won the Oscar for that. Spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah, uh, it's Which, which he finally deserved, right? Which he should have won for Wolf of Wall Street anyway. Which he should have won for Wolf of Wall Street a long time ago. Yeah, for sure. Um, but no, you have this, like, really open scenery with big mountains and very open space and this really good I soundtrack. I love that movie, too. And it just gives me this sense of, like, like, emptiness in this big world as an individual, but yet unified by something like family because that is the, the plot Jesus of the movie. Deep. Uh, to avenge his That's son. deep. What about the? Oh so, my yeah. god, the fight with the bear. Well, I mean, not fight. Yeah. That's not a fight. Yeah, <laughs> the, it's not a fight. It's like th yeah, CGI blue screen or green screen or whatever. But yeah, but it really did. It, I mean, I, I have really no, I have fierce. no idea. Like I, I left the cinema, 
and I had to look online. How the fuck yeah, did like that? How, how did they do the bear fight? Yeah, yeah, because I literally so thought it was like a, an actual bear trained to kill without killing. Yeah, yeah, like a dog, right? For yeah. sure. Yeah, a hundred percent. But then I, I, um, I thought about if the bear is actually trained to kill without killing, he will <laughs> probably kill you. He would probably still kill you. Yeah. Yeah, without wanting to he, kill you. He's pretty heavy as well, and he's on top of you. And yeah, that's unbelievable. Did you watch the movie, The Revenant? Oh man, like you there should. is like five minutes. I mean, it's less than five minutes. Oh, it's probably five minutes. You can breathe. You're like, yeah, yeah. Like you can fucking breathe. Like for real. You're watching that yeah. and you're like, you think you are e being eaten alive. <laughs> Imagine that in 3D. That would be scary, actually. You would literally be eaten alive. Yeah. What, what, what a movie. I love that movie too. So tell me more movies. Uh, Which, by the way, called... Revenant should be at the same level of Mission Impossible as well oh i see that's a good point that's a good point uh there's a movie so last nights with well, a k I watched that. it's not a very known movie it didn't do very well with critics or a box office but uh, it's uh, morgan freeman and clive owen as the two okay. main actors and it's a lot about uh, honor and respect and regaining honor oh how's it called again whatnot. last night last nights but those were last nights nights or nights or night Night, nights with a K and an S at the end. Oh, nights! Oh my God! Nights, yeah. I th I thought okay, okay. Last nights, I nights, like yeah. I like medieval shit or like war exactly, shit. Exactly, exactly. Oh, okay, must watch. I'm gonna add and, it to my uh, notes. It's like combined with like a uh, like Asian action screenplay, but in medieval fighting with swords and whatnot. Ooh, and, that's uh, my jam with, right there. With Clive Owen, Morgan Freeman, and I really like it a lot. Well, Morgan like, Freeman nice. in one of those roles that sounds mildly inappropriate, like. That's, yes, I can't so picture I don't it in my mind. No, so he okay. I can spoil. He's not fighting. He's speaking a lot, and that is what he does really well. Oh, she okay. Yeah. You bought me in. I gotta, I gotta watch yeah. this. It's oh my movie. god! You just gave me the best. He gave me the. <laughs> he just pitched me a, a movie Another top that I will watch. I'm, what what year is that from? Sorry. What year is that from? It is from 2015. 2015. So that's yeah. fairly recently. It's, it's fairly called recent, yeah. Last Nights. Nights like a. Yeah. Okay. You you watched it? No, I have it on the screen. You haven't. He hasn't seen any movies. What is this? I don't know, man. Did you watch any movies before? Like, how old are you? <laughs> He's seven True. years of age. I'm, oh, I'm employing an underage. I don't blame him. Yeah, how can, how can you employ an underage person like that? That's terrible. I don't know. I, I also brought him for, from Asia, so I don't know how they let us do that. Oh, that is terrible. <laughs> that's, that's the issue. What? Oh my theaters. god. We don't have movie theaters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he he roasts himself, man. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, so Revenant, Last Nights, and another one. I, I guess I would have to go with like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh yes, that's good. I, I, th I think you can't go I wrong with that. Here. No, I think that's a safe bet. Oh man, I, I I love the friendship between Legolas and Gimli. That is yeah. Oh oh, don't even mention it. I love that too. It's so clean. <sighs> I love that movie. And the, the, the entire movie just keeps me this vibe of like. Like, like so much positivity and the story is so deep and yep. the characters are so like I'm so familiar with them. A hundred percent. I've played like all the games, I've seen all the movies, and they're making a TV show. Uh, I think Amazon picked it up. Really? Um, yeah, it it has double the budget of the Game of Thrones per episode. It's about twenty million dollars. No per episode. way! Are you yes, for real? Sir. No, for surreal. Oh they bought my the, god! The, you, they bought you know the that? plot for like two hundred fifty million, and then they're paying twenty million an episode for the production. So it should be really good. Lot of rings show, yeah, yeah, but it's gonna be, be so. I, I might be incorrect, but the timeline is before the Hobbit, so it's like that's you're not gonna have crazy. A lot of the characters. 2x Game of Thrones's budget, yeah, per episode. <gasps> it's crazy, that's unbelievable. Amazon, man, Jeff Bezos yeah. is just going <laughs> big D moves. He just, he mm -hmm. just at some point, he's just, I mean, I can't, I can't just. Be increasingly richer. I get. I'll become a trillionaire anyway. So I may as well just fucking waste it all in, yep. in stupid shit. So that they're doing this other show. He took this other show. How was it called? He he picked it up, uh, from the dirt. It was, they stopped making it, and he picked it up again. And everybody was like, "Oh, I love you, Bezos." And he's like overspending on that as well. Man, Bezos is no like idea. at this point he just doesn't care. The expense. Yeah, the expense. The expense. Oh, the expense. The expense. Oh. I didn't know that. I didn't want to pick it up until um, I had confirmation that this thing was coming soon. 
But The Expanse, everybody speaks very well about it. Uh, you just didn't yeah, have that true. many people watching it. But so The Expanse last night, I have I, I love having these conversations. Never go wrong. Yeah. So do I. Um. All right, man. Thanks yeah. so very much for being Thank here. Thank you. And Arnold. please, why don't you look at the camera and talk to the people watching? Uh, tell them anything you want to tell them. Okay. So first of all, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Okay, that's a given. That that's a must. That has to be done. Which Second YouTube all, channel? You. The G. Okay, that is a good point. The G two YouTube channel, of course, and my own at Blue Penguin. It should be there. At you know, follow Blue me if Penguin. There. Yes, sir. Uh, CT videos coming up as well, and Ooh. Pro League highlights. There are even some videos um, from a year ago where we have full Pro League games with the in-game communication uh, in the video, actually, which is very, very interesting to watch. Um, so be sure to check that out on my YouTube. Other than that, thank you for and your the Twitch channel. Welcome. Oh, and much we gotta pluck it all. Yes, all right. Go ahead. Twitter, Twitter at you, YouTube Pingu. Uh, Twitch at Pingu and YouTube at Blue Penguin. That is all for me. I have no Instagram, I'm afraid, and I do not have a Facebook. Why don't you have an Instagram with that beautiful See, I hair? Just said, I would like to make an Instagram, but I would also first have to take pictures, and that has not really happened yet. But going to Japan. I'll be trying my very, very hardest, Carlos, for my sake, for okay. your sake, and for Instagram's sake, to take pictures, oh, that's beautiful. share it with the world, and maybe make an Instagram. Keep in so, mind, one day you'll be 65, and you will wish you still had that yeah, beautiful blonde hair going on. <laughs> I'm actually, funny story, I'm actually balding. Listen, everybody is balding. This is, okay, this is just a I'm byproduct fast. of growing. <laughs> I'm, bi I'm balding fast. Listen, it's, it's nowhere as fast as, it, as it'll be five years from now. Don't worry about that. Okay, good, good. <laughs> so enjoy. I was afraid. No, no, enjoy Enjoy the very uh, low, bald, slow balding pattern that you're going through at slow. the moment. Oh. Because five years from now, that shit's going crazy. It's like, uh, it's like, if, no. you're, it's like if, you're, if you're if you're drinking creatine fucking daily. You... <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> it's You'll just see. gone. Just a poop. Exa it's no, gone. exactly. So enjoy oh it. Enjoy while it lasts. You have a beautiful. You have a beautiful hair. Rock it. Mm, just get as many trillions of followers in Instagram as possible. Because when you're balding, you'll have to hit the gym to to ah, to look presentable. I mean, oh, I the, uh, I fucking bold bold guys that hit the gym. Yeah. And are muscles, and, yeah. yeah big muscles and also hit the solarium. Man, ladies fall for that. I'm telling you. No. Bold solarium gym. That's like the DILF. <laughs> it's the DILF project. I guess that, that, that's the plan when we want to retire, right? That's what we can do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you sure. go. All right, Definitely. man. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you, Carlos. We love you, Pengu. And for everybody else, that's not Pengu. Although for <laughs> Pengu, uh, the thing is that if he wants to, we can give this stuff for free. But anyhow, oh. production, why don't you give me stuff? Before... We go before I give the goodbye for season one. I gotta, I gotta make a plaque, and after that there'll be another plaque. So this is like two plaques. I love plaques. Mm. Ozlor is my nickname. I even though I no longer play, I'm a washed up player. That's the <laughs> jersey that uh, Pingu played with exactly. He played with the nickname Ozlor. You can even smell his sweat in here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't clean, we don't wash these things. Oh, you shouldn't. It's winter. Jerseys. Exactly. The U.S. jersey. Oh, say can you see? Beautiful. Actually, yeah. I, I love that, ri uh, that rhythm, that anthem. I really do. The I'm more like a country road, take me home kind of guy. But I country road. Oh, th let's, let's let's sing this one with the pink one. Country roads, road, take me home, take me home to, to the place, the place I belong. Belong in Virginia. Virginia. I don't know the lyrics, Beautiful. but that was, yeah. Beautiful. That, my, my. I love that song, man. That, in, that, in the, that song is amazing. Uh, they got it. Hang on a second. What was the movie? In, uh, what was the movie? Uh, Brokeback Mountain? Kingsman 2. <laughs> no, 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 it's not that movie. The other one, uh, Kingsman 2. The oh, Kingsman 2. That's, that's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, I yeah. watched it. The country road TV home scene was emotional to me. It was so good. So, like the inverse version, which, again, some of these you can't buy yet, but keep an eye because you'll be able to buy soon. And that's the Spanish yes. version. Ay, ay, ay. That's oh, Mexican, which is not Spanish. I'm Spanish. I fucking hate myself for doing what I just did. <laughs> we don't say ay, ay, ay in Spain, okay? And we don't okay. have any left, but I'm just showing you to make you feel bad about not having bought it. Of course. Oh, there's five small ones? That tells a lot about, oh. about about the fan base. We just hit the gym a that lot. That does. That does. Where's Reddit? 
Um, but also, another point I must add here, Carlos, is that when the next limited edition jersey comes out, that is when you know exactly how fast you gotta buy it because they sell out so fast. Right? My man doing the plaques for me. So be there or be square. That's, that sound is so powerful. I just, I, I wanna buy my stuff <laughs> myself. Exactly. People, this was the last episode of Esports with Ocelot, the G2 podcast, season one, 2018. People, why is it the last episode? Because we're bringing in 35 production people. We're bringing in golden background. We're bringing in more G2 Esports stuff. We're changing the office. We're changing the script. We're changing the things or improving the things we talk about. Pingu will have Instagram by the time we have the next podcast. People, promise. podcast season two esports with Ozalar. It's coming soon and I want you to be ready. G2esports.com. Follow us everywhere. Twitter at G2esports. Facebook's Facebook.com slash G2esports. What else do we have? Snapchat, G2esports. Or G2? YouTube, YouTube. YouTube or YouTube? G2esports. Any anything else production? Instagram. Instagram, I already said it. You have to pay attention. You have to pay attention, production. <laughs> People, we love you. Have a fantastic day and uh, see you in the next season.